Today I'd like to talk about uh, an electric field. So, When you have different charges uh, around, these charges influence or some say shape the space that's around them. Uh, it uh, affects other charges. Remember, it repels uh, or attracts. And uh, a good way of thinking about this is uh, to imagine a map. Uh, some people, a very common illustration is to imagine a, a a bed sheet and uh, say you put some objects on there like a marble um, that will create curvature in the sheet and other objects that you put on there might roll in towards them. Uh, if you had a bowling ball on the sheet well then that would just attract it all the more. Um, and uh, well a, a negative charge, a big supply of negative charge would kind of act like one of these valleys and uh, it would attract some positively charged stuff you might happen to throw on the field. Um, if you had a big amount of positive charge, uh, that might act kind of like a, a hill. Um, if you were able to somehow put a, a hill on a bed sheet, or maybe if you put a rocket underneath the bed sheet, kind of pointing up, uh, or with your finger underneath, kind of pushed up on the bed sheet, you could create this hill, and things would roll away from it. So. In general, uh, the more powerful uh, a charge, the the bigger this effect is. Uh, the, sometimes it's helpful for me to think of a higher hill um, or a bigger mountain. And uh, typically, the closer you are to it, the, the more that effect is. If you are way far away from the charge, somewhere in here, uh, you can feel it, and you might kind of roll in that direction, but it's not going to be nearly as extreme as if you were, say, right there. Uh, then you'd really feel an attraction downward. So, uh, first of all, we typically indicate the direction um, of these attractions, the way that something would roll, uh, by using what's called a field line. Uh, so, typically, uh, if you can imagine like this bed sheet, if we were able to kind of draw a map of the direction that objects would go. This object would go this way. Uh, something that was placed here would probably go this way. Something placed here would go this way, and so forth. If I were to draw a bunch of maps, that's, these lines that I'm drawing in are called field lines. They're the direction that an object would move. So, usually, field lines are drawn um, assuming the direction that a positive charge would travel. So remember, positive charges are repelled by other positive charges, and that's why field lines are drawn away from this. And uh, positively charged objects would be attracted to negatively charged stuff. And so uh, that's why field lines are drawn pointing in towards the negative charge. Uh, typically, um, if you see a lot of field lines around you, uh, that usually means that the field strength there is, is very strong. Um, that would be like a big, massive bowling ball nearby, uh, very powerful attraction, uh, as opposed to further away from there. The lines would be further apart. And as a general rule, as you're drawing field lines, the way that uh, uh, an object would go, uh, field lines should never cross. So. Uh, let's do a couple examples of what a field line is and how do we come up with these maps, um, thinking about them. Now, I'm going to start actually with uh, a positive and negative charge. If I got a, a big chunk of positive charge here, huge pile of protons or something like that, and over here I got a huge pile of electrons, how does those piles of electrons affect the space nearby? And uh, the way I like to think about it is what if I had um, a single proton here, what would happen to it? This proton would be repelled by the big pile of protons that's over here. So it would want to act in this direction. However, it would also be attracted to this big pile of electrons over here. And so maybe I could draw in a force going in this direction. And, uh, well, those two forces are kind of fighting, kind of tugging at it. And so the resultant vector would be kind of in this direction. And so the proton that was placed here would feel something in this general direction. If I were to look at a proton here, 
it would be repelled by these. Uh, but it's further away, so it wouldn't be repelled quite as much. It would be attracted by the pile of electrons that's here. And so the net effect is that it might look like uh, it's producing a force in this direction. And uh, maybe you could imagine, uh, if I were to continue this exercise, a proton here would be repelled by those and attracted by them, so it would feel a, a force like this. proton on this side would feel kind of the same stuff that they are, but um, mirror image, so it would probably feel something like this. And if I were to continue to draw that for every location in space, uh, eventually, you could produce a picture that would look something like this. So here, usually they'll eventually curve around. Uh, if you're on this side, you might not actually ever get attracted to this. Maybe you just constantly go back off to the side um, and so forth. But a picture would probably look something like this. Now, there are a lot of applets available that you can use on the web to cre produce these sorts of pictures. Um, it's very easy for a calculator or, or for a computer to um, predict the amount of force and do all these calculations and make these drawings really nice. Um, I'll put a link to one of those. Um, in the comments of the YouTube video. And uh, if you're in my class and you've seen my website, uh, there are links to them there as well. Um, and so you can create these sorts of pictures um, perfectly, easily uh, with those applets. And that's what I generally do. But it's nice to be able to think about um, and get a little bit of an idea what the picture would look like um, just by this. If we have two positive charges, big pile of protons, big pile of protons here. so. Anything over in this direction would be repelled from this and repelled from that. And the net effect would probably be uh, moving off in this direction. Something over here would be more repelled by them than by these. And so it probably would move a little bit in like this. And uh, if I remember right from pictures I've seen, um, typically in this sort of a scenario, you get field lines that look this is horribly drawn. Sorry, my uh, tablet's acting a little sticky today. But but anyway, you'll see a picture that looks something like this, and it's got a mirror image, so it looks about the same on this side, too. And uh, in between this, uh, well, I can't go on forever, because eventually it'll get repelled from here. I suppose if you were like perfectly right on this line, maybe you could go and, and move this far and then get repelled from them and go this way and kind of oscillate back and forth. Um, but if you're on either side of this, you'll probably get pushed along with the other field lines that are drawn in here. So a little sloppy and not quite balanced, but there's a, a little bit of a picture of what that field would look like. So um, a positive and two negative charges, I'm probably not going to do it justice to really draw in what this would look like. But um, one thing I do like to do is, is uh, if there is positive and negative charges, I'll draw in, um, first of all, a line connecting that and that, and a line here and here. Uh, I don't want to draw a field line here because uh, it wouldn't be attracted there. Anything that is here would get attracted there, repelled from here. I'm not quite sure what it would look like. Um, I'm sure we could do something like that. And uh, maybe there's something that, like an asymptote that goes right in between here. So again, I'm not the greatest at drawing these things, but it might look something like that when we're done. If you ever get stuck, always draw a little proton and figure out well, how is it going to be attracted by this or repelled by this, and, and then in what direction does that kind of net effect work. I do want to take a second and draw a plate, um, because that's kind of a unique thing we haven't talked about. Uh, for a plate of charge, uh, imagine if I had a big metal um, uh, 
plate, typically dinner plates you think of as round, but uh, most of the time in these situations we're talking about a nice big rectangular plate. Um, and then underneath it, I've got uh, another plate. And uh, suppose I throw a whole bunch of excess protons on this plate. and a whole bunch of excess electrons on this plate. How uh, would the field lines look? So uh, if I happen to be a, a spare proton that, or a yeah, spare proton that ended up here in the middle, I would be definitely repelled away from here and attracted to here. And so you could draw a field line like this. And uh, right next to it, same thing, and so forth. And uh, the reason I draw this particular setup is because when you have a plate of charge, that was supposed to be straight, um, that's a good way of producing a uniform electric field where it's just a nice, beautiful direction, whereas here you're kind of going off in all direction. This isn't very useful to us, but here, um, aligning these plates of charge up, um, we can harness this kind of natural flow of um, particles from one plate to the other. Um, we can kind of use that like, uh, imagine a big water wheel um, that usually have water flowing down in a river that could turn. Uh, you could produce something similar to this and catch protons or catch electrons and harness that energy. And that's uh, where we'll be going in the next couple of days when we talk about voltage and uh, energy uh, related to fields.